Deadpool 2, directed by David Leitch, is a sequel to the 2016 smash hit Deadpool. This time our sarcastic protagonist Wade Wilson is motivated to protect a mutant kid that the villainous Cable has come back from the future for to kill. This kid supposedly becomes quite the evil villain in the future, and Cable has come back to stop him before he ever turns into the monster he seems destined to be. Deadpool, on the other hand, sees the positive potential in the kid, and therefore he and Cable are at odds. As the two battle it out for the fate of the future, some other parties get in the mix as well. Alright, so I don't even need to say how anticipated this movie is for a lot of moviegoers. It was definitely one of my personally more anticipated films coming out in 2018, but I wasn't hyped for it on, say, the, like, the level I was for like Infinity War or anything like that, but that was a pretty high bar to set. But regardless, I will say that I liked the first Deadpool a lot. I don't think it's an amazing film, I don't think it's the best superhero movie ever made or anything like that, but it's a very good film that has a strong identity and a unique identity. Deadpool 2 delivers more of the same with a few extra add-ons, I'd say, and I'm happy to report, honestly, that it doesn't disappoint at all. I had a really good time watching the film, and I'd say that it's probably a little bit better than the first even. There's still the fourth wall breaking, albeit less of it, the over-the-top violence, the self-aware comedy, and of course the writing that seems to focus primarily on the majorly sarcastic personality of Wade Wilson. I found myself laughing very frequently, and I think that's in large part due to the sheer number of pop culture references, more specifically the references to DC and Marvel movies, and just the general creativity and wittiness of the writing as a whole. It always helps with superhero films that you actually enjoy the genre, obviously, because even though Deadpool doesn't stray too far from the beaten path, it still really helps to sort of be invested in the superhero genre to enjoy this film. But I think it's especially important with Deadpool too, because there's a lot of references and jokes to superhero tropes. The current MCU and the DCEU especially, that's kind of what they focus on. And of course the X-Men too, that's thrown in there. There's just a lot of referential jokes about those three things specifically. There's just a lot of really well-written jokes here that almost always land. There's a few exceptions here and there, but I'd say that overall this movie is funnier than the first by a slim margin. They're both really funny. There's some scenes in Deadpool 2 that are absolutely hysterical scenes that you know, just kind of when you're watching them, that they're going to be scenes that everyone watches over and over that they search for on YouTube when the Blu-ray comes out. Because it's raunchy stuff, obviously, just like the first one, but you know what you're getting into with the Deadpool movie, and it's all the funnier because of it. It's R-rated, like you guys probably know, and the over-the-top craziness that has no hesitation in just being pretty silly and juvenile, as juvenile as possible, it 100% works here. So considering this is a superhero movie, after all, you're probably wondering whether or not it actually delivers in the action department. The answer is yes, there's a handful of truly excellent scenes that will definitely satisfy those that are primarily there for those superhero action thrills. There's probably three major action scenes that carry the action along, and they're all excellent, and it really helps that they have David Leitch here from the John Wick movies, or at least the first one, kind of helping uh, guide the action along. But a large part of why the action works so excellently and other things work so well also is because of the three great characters here, the standout characters in Deadpool, Domino, and Cable. These three are really great, and a large reason why this movie works as well as it does. We all know about Deadpool and his ridiculously silly personality, which absolutely works here once again. If you liked it in the first film, you'll like it here. But Domino and Cable are fresh additions to this universe, and they both are awesome, like I mentioned. Domino, played by Zazie Beetz, whose name I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but you guys have to correct me on that. She's awesome, regardless, and I loved how well she and Deadpool played off one another. It's tough when you have a main character that has such a large personality like Deadpool does, because there's not always room for the other characters to really breathe overall. But Domino's confidence and charisma definitely help her just cement her place in the story as well. But my favorite character in this movie is easily Cable. The two top villains of this year of 2018 are probably in a landslide both gonna go to Josh Brolin. First he delivered a Thanos and now Cable. Cable's super badass and he's dynamic as a villain and he's actually kind of sympathetic as well because I often find myself like rooting for Cable because I understood where he was coming from as a villain. I understood why he wanted to kill this kid and it kind of felt justified in a way. I think in some ways he reminded me of Killmonger in that sense, who I agreed with less overall but still is similar to Cable in the sense that he has an understandable reason for the mission that he's on. My only complaint with Cable is that he's actually not in the movie enough. He's just great as a character and Josh Brolin was a perfect fit for this role. One thing that's interesting about Deadpool too is that there's probably less Deadpool this time around and more Wade Wilson. I actually didn't mind that because I feel like the balance was still there. And ultimately, Wade does end up developing quite a bit as a character by the end of the film. Superhero movies are tricky, because they need to be fun and exciting, but Deadpool also needs to be funny and engaging as well in a different kind of way. Also, you need to develop the main characters so that they grow in a significant way by the end of the movie. 
Deadpool 2's balancing act is actually very good overall. And I think the way in which Wade Wilson himself develops here as a character is actually one of the brighter spots of the movie. Because while he's still a major jokester, there's some nice balance here between serious development and silly gags. Again, I found Deadpool 2 to be well balanced overall. And a big reason it is is because they have sort of a concerted effort that's obvious here to have Wade Wilson grow as a character. The writing and direction are both really good here, like I mentioned. And of course it helps that Ryan Reynolds was pretty much built for this role. With that said though, Deadpool 2 doesn't always stick the landing. I found myself a little less engaged with the motivations of Wade here in a very specific kind of way. There's a reason he's so vehemently protecting this kid, and I found the justification for this reason just a little shallow in force. The problem with my feelings on this is that a big driving force of the plot is this justification, and Wade sort of attempts to reform this kid and keep him from a darker path, but this narrative thread ultimately doesn't quite feel as weaved into the overall story as well as it should. In addition to that, there's a lot of times where Deadpool 2 is surprising in a good way, and there's other times where it's surprising in a bad way and sort of gets in its own way. There's characters that are underutilized and there's plot twists that don't always fit as comfortably within the story as they probably should, and it's a mixed bag. Some good surprises, some bad. But overall, I really enjoyed Deadpool 2 a lot. I think if you enjoyed the first one, you're really gonna like this one too. And if you haven't seen the first, you probably should watch it, but you probably could honestly go and watch this one and still have a good time with it regardless. As for the pros cons, I thought Deadpool 2 consistently delivered good laughs. There's lots of good superhero fun to enjoy. Three excellent characters and performances were also part of the film, and ultimately it proves to be a very well balanced movie. As for the cons, I thought some character motivations were iffy, and some surprises don't always land. I'm gonna give Deadpool 2 a nine out of 10, and definitely recommend you check it out if you've seen the first and liked it, or you're just looking for a fun superhero movie experience. Remember, it's R-rated though, so leave the kids at home for this one. So did you guys see Deadpool 2 yet? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know whether you like Deadpool 1 or Deadpool 2 more. I think I'd go 2 ever so slightly, but Cable's probably a big reason for that, honestly. But make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Either way, this is Wolfoxification signing off. See you in the next review.